What's up everybody, this video we're going to talk about something that's really important in web development and that is local storage. You can think of this as a little database that stays in the browser of the client. So if there's some information that you want to store but you don't want to store it on the server, you can instead store it on the client in local storage. Now, what would you possibly want to do this for? Well, in our example, when we give an access token so that people who log in can use our API, we want that access token to be used throughout our application. And that's going to be sent with every request. So in this situation, I'm viewing our application from the client. I get an access token. I want to take this value, save it somewhere, local storage, and then use it for my future requests. Using local storage is actually quite easy. We'll show you in our code here where we have the console log of the data, that's what's showing up down here. Instead of console logging it, we can add it to local storage. So you'll just say local storage dot set item. You can see the signature here takes a key and a value. If that key and value doesn't already exist, it'll create a new one. So what we can do is we can pass in the first thing and let's just call this token. And then the second thing we're gonna pass in is the actual data. So let's just pass in data directly like that. And now instead of console logging data, let's console log local storage. Now that we're console logging that, we will go ahead and log in. You can see now storage is being displayed in the console. One of the properties on here is the token. Now the token is an object with multiple properties, so the string representation here is just object. You also have the ability to use multiple properties. So for example, we could create this to be the access token and I'm just going to leave it as access, and then you could say data.access. We could do the same exact thing for the refresh, so we'll say data.refresh, and change this to refresh. Now, let's go ahead and log in, take a look at our new storage, and we have the access and the refresh token there directly available. Token is still there, so you'll notice that it persisted between each execution, so some things you might see are whether your website is in dark mode or light mode. That could be stored in local storage. You may also see if you have some, for example, a documentation site and you switch between multiple tabs, well, that change might be reflected across the page in all of the other pages, so that decision can be stored in local storage. Local storage is saved temporarily, but it's not guaranteed to be saved forever you can easily clear local storage by saying local storage dot clear. This is a function call, hit enter. It'll say undefined because the function doesn't return anything and this is kind of like a read eval loop. But now if you take a look at local storage, the length is zero and there's no properties there. This is pretty similar to what you'll do when you log a user out. You will just get rid of the access and refresh properties. And now that we have these values, we can use them in another request to prove that we have access to the API. So let's head over to the customers and we'll start here where we make a request with the URL. We can include some extra information, specifically as we've done before, you can include the method. This is a get request and get is the default, so you don't have to actually put anything for the method, but you can put the headers here. And inside of the headers, you're going to want to say content type, and this is going to be application JSON. And then the next thing is authorization, which I think we can just do without quotes since there's no hyphens. And this is going to be bearer and then we will include the access token which we will get from local storage this will just be local storage dot get item and then you'll pass in the key which was called access so let's save and try this out we're going to log in again just to get a brand new fresh access token and now we should be able to visit the customers that works the individual customer api call is not including the access token so if I click on any of these it doesn't work and we're getting a 401 unauthorized so you can now practice by putting the access token on the individual customer API endpoint as well so let's go ahead and do that real quick we're going to go to customer and this is going to be very similar to this here so I will copy these headers and scroll up to the fetch we will include an object here headers and then paste those values. Now they should show up. So let's head over to our customers page, click one, and the data shows up. 
We can change it locally here, but the save and delete methods will invoke different functions in our JavaScript code, and those don't already have the header. So what happens is if I try to save, I get another 401 unauthorized. And another note, whenever you do get a 401 unauthorized, you should let the user know or automatically redirect to the login page. So let's go fix that for the update as well as the delete. So it's going to be very similar to this pattern where we navigate to the login, if there's a 401 status code. So let's grab that section first. Um, I will take that there and let's go find the other fetches. So we can say if response.status is 401, we will navigate to login. Same thing for the delete, which I'm just going to jump to that. We will do a very similar thing here. If the response is 401, navigate to login. That should fix the 401 problem. Now we just have to figure out how to attach the access token. So we're going to copy these headers here and include those on the other fetch requests. So we'll go down to fetch, replace these headers with the new ones. And same thing for the delete fetch, which I always lose. There it is, paste that there. Looks good. Let's try it out. Googler, just for example, save. That worked. And then we will delete. Yay. Now, if you want to simulate what it might look like if your token expires, you can just change the access token in the console and see what happens. So you can say local storage dot access. Set it to something bogus like five. Now, when we try to change this, we hit save. It redirects to the login. The same thing should happen but we might have to log in again. So we'll log in, visit the customers, go to one of these, then change the local storage dot access, then hit delete, and it brings us back to the login. Thank you for sticking through part two of our login capability. We still have a lot to do with logging in, so definitely stick with it. Stay tuned for the next episode. We're really starting to see things come together. I'm really excited. I hope to see you there. Peace out.